Yeah, so wait, it's two, two, of, two, two weapons, weapons off the rip. Off the bat. So uh, it's a very interesting strategy. It's going to be attached, getting rid of the purifier. So uh, it's going to be a little bit easier to get in the bunker. And then it's going to be the guys on Optic Gaming getting rid of the Tempest. Uh, Clay, big fan of the Tempest. Going to get that one out of the game. And obviously, it's uh, another one that is crucial when you're trying to lock down bunker. You're able to connect it one shot, chains to another player outside, forces you know, a lot of uh, players to just be zoned out of the hard point. So it's two uh, good weapons to get out here early. It's going to be Overclock and HC, the next things to follow. Let's see what they're going to target next. It looks like we're going to go after the Tacticals. You've only got one pick left here for Optic. We'll see what they try to target. You got to think, yeah, Rapid, High Caliber, and also the Concussion should be coming off. It should be High Caliber Concussion. Yep, that would make the most sense. Usually you see those connected with each other. So when you see Rapid or High Caliber goes, the opposite one will go. And then when you see Flashbang go, usually you see Concussion go. But uh, just scroll this back. Who was the, that was yeah. banned by Karma. So Clay doesn't really have to get that one out. I mean, they, if they want to leave the Tacticals in, they I can go formal, ahead and no. Formal. I thought Formal will go after Concussion. And leave. Yeah, okay, well, it didn't matter. Yeah, regardless of which he picked, Clayster probably would have grabbed the other one. Uh, this is a team that you think, you know, doesn't need to work on anything gimmicky or anything out of the box. Like, they are a team that can, that can play Optic Gaming tough, straight up. So and one that of looks the, to be the plan. It's one of the only teams that, when you see this banner protect come across, you're just like, all right, well, they can do it. Yeah. It's like, usually, it's like, uh, why would you not try and you know, force a, a little bit of a slower game? Actually, you know what's kind of cool? Yeah, what? Look at how they line up the four-man list. It, it's actually kind of their matchup. Scump Attach, Krim Zuma, Karma Enable, Formal Clay. Oh, that's kind of cool. It's actually like kind of their positions on their team matching up. Well, Zuma's going to grab his Kinetic Armor. Karma's going to go with Heat Wave. Enable Active Camo. Now you'll have uh, these last two players, Formal and Clay. They'll probably run weapons. So you see Formal, he'll grab a Scythe. Clay will grab the Scythe as well. You have a mirror matchup on both sides. Not too surprising. Once you see the Purifier and the Tempest go, it kind of leaves you down to just the Scythe in terms of yeah. weapons. And then uh, obviously none of those big three abilities, Camo, Kinetic, and Heat Wave targeted. So you're going to get all three of those. Well, that's, that's actually what surprised me the most. I mean, do we see weapon mage from time to time? Sure, but... More often than not, recently, it's been banning that camo, banning that heat wave, getting rid of the ability. So to leave all of those in and target the weapons surprises me a little yeah. bit, but we'll see how it plays out for either side. Just wait on these guys to get their classes ready, and we'll get ready to hop I mean, into the action. Some things that make it uh, through. Man of War makes it in. Uh, Shiva makes it in, too. So we'll see how those ARs come into play. I'm really looking at uh, Zuma in this first match. How does he come out and play on yeah. Stronghold? I think he's been the biggest difference maker, I think, for FaZe here in Stage 2. I think he's really started to turn into the Zuma we saw at the end of Advanced Warfare. Now, I'm curious what he ends up using, because we've seen him rock the HVK. I mean, there's a good chance we're going to see, throughout the course, this HVK, Mana War, Shiva, M8. Like, we could see f legitimately four different ARs. There's a chance for it. We were talking about the other night. Uh, we had one match, and... It it wasn't like, you know, 100 Thieves trying to pull out light machine guns or something. It was a regular match where we saw something like eight or nine different yeah, weapons. Yeah, it was a French hard point. You saw uh, awesome. ICR, you saw XR2s. I uh, love it. CUDAs, VMPs. I think that was when Rapid Fire made it in, so it mixes things up a yeah. little bit. But still, again, shout out to Treyarch. You know, I, I, I do I love seeing M8 on VMP? Sure. But when you get a little bit more variety in there, I mean, this has been the most variety we've had in uh, ever in the history of Well, usually of the way so Call of Duty cool. goes is uh, the pros get together and it's like, oh, well, that guy's playing very well with the VMP. The VMP is well, now the best SMG. Oh, the M8? Yep, the M8's back. True. That's the best assault rifle. It's like the, the M8's a great all-around assault rifle, it but is. it's like if you're fighting a guy inside Mansion, Man of War is probably a bit better. Well, like, I feel like some of those other guns, like, in different situations, they're better. And I think now what you've seen this year more than any other is players experiencing, like, different play styles. And, hey, you know, maybe I'm an assault rifle player who, you know, plays in a little bit more close quarter scenarios. I should go with the Man of War over the M. Well, let's talk a little bit about Stronghold Hardpoint. Do you think that these weapons in particular may, may change things a little bit uh what do you expect to see? I mean, I, I mentioned you can see, right? M8, HVK, Shiva, Man of War. Like, all those are viable here in some capacity, I think. But let's take a look at it. Revan has delivered us, delivered us some statistics. So taking a look at it, this should be a tight game because on Stronghold, FaZe is currently 3-1, and one, Optic 4-0. Oh. So you would think this is one now, that should be a pretty back-and-forth battle. Overall, in Stage 2, uh, we mentioned it. Uh, Phase is 16 and 2 in hardpoint, Optic Gaming 13 and 6. Where you see the biggest disparity amongst these teams is in uplink, which is very interesting because Optic, a very strong uplink team in stage one, uh, number one overall record, I believe. In stage two, they're 9 and 10, phase 13 and 5. Optic catches a little bit of a break though because Breach Uplink is phase's worst uplink. And we actually can get into the game 
Dragons. It's going to be map one between FaZe and Optic getting underway. Well, kicking things off with Zuma. We'll see what he's able to do early. Everything in the kitchen fake being thrown at him, but Clayster able to clear the way as he tries to bounce out, not able to find anything. But we'll kick things over to Attaches, lead submachine gun player. He's getting entry kills on Scumpy before ultimately dropping. Let's see where he gets up on the spawn. Looks like he's going to spawn out in rocks. Try to line up a few frags here, see if he can pick anything up. But he's probably going to drop as soon as he pushes out. Let's get closer to the action here for Optic Gaming. And uh, you just see some of the assault rifles coming into play early. You see Karma with the Man of War go on board. Uh, it's going to be Formal with an M8. So both of those players opt to go with different assault rifles. Going to play different positions. Formal plays a little bit more passive. Go further back. Karma is going to be in and around the hard points trying to help his team. Uh, he's going to drop there with the Man of War. And it's going to be Scump taking the last few seconds here. Is, uh, it's a good start for Optic Gaming. But they're going to give up Mansion Control here to phase. It's a very important few kills that Optic Gaming needs to get here. Nice shots there by Scum taking out Clay behind top tables and he's gonna have one more player directly in front of him. You saw that too, like that, that close fight like that when he has yeah. stock man just shaking and baking, tough for Clayster to end up getting a couple burst in on him. So he is ultimately able to win it. Now we'll stick with Krem6 as he's coming in the back. He's able to find a Tatch, a nade in. You see one player on X-ray lower, not able to find it. One person behind him, I think, and below as well. Will he be able to hunt down these kills? Now he's got one in front, the movement not able to pick it up. Let's actually switch focus over to Enable. Enable, when one of the more consistent slayers for this phase side, he's currently five and three on a three streak. I feel like uh, early in Black Ops 3, we talked about Enable a ton, and then he's just gonna become you know, a guy that we've uh, expected great games from, but a little bit underappreciated. I mean, at the beginning, he was just putting up monster numbers in the slaying department and crazy hill time. Uh, now it's still putting up the same good games, and you see FaZe starting to blow this game open, Maven. It's going to be FaZe keeping the mansion control for you know, pretty much the extended period of time in that hill. Optic's going to challenge the last few seconds, but it's going to be FaZe set up for half wall. It's going to be attached, losing a big gun battle. That's Scump with a VMP taking him out with an M8. Such a difficult shot to hit. Now it's going to force Zuma to rotate all the way out, try and get these cuts. Karma picks him up before any of his teammates drop. Huge kills going down for Optic Gaming. Well, Clayster, though, is really starting to heat up right as I say if he ends up dropping. You do have heat wave here for attach. He might try to heat wave in. There it is. He helps his teammates pick up one. He's getting the points at the hard point, but Optic is soaring in. Scump starting to go off. He's 9-6 and six on a 4-streak. Let's stick with him through the respawn. Base has built a bit of a lead, but you know how it works with Optic typically. You get to that 100-100 area with a team, and that's kind of when they sort of take over and explode. Let's see if they can opt to do it here, or if FaZe will remain in control of this Yeah, one. the thing with Optic, I mean, you can beat them in hardpoint if you just kind of weather that storm. You know the push and the assault is going to come. They're going to start to pick up kills. It's just a matter of whether you can you know, keep the game close at that moment in time. You know, maybe pick up some kills for yourself, although it's very difficult when they start to get rolling. And uh, it's really about you know, giving up, controlling those spawns to the next hardpoint. I mean, right now, five seconds left on this hard point. It's going to be phase taking the remainder of the time. And it doesn't look like anyone really set up great for this next hard point. It's going to be one player from Optic inside the hill, but look at this back area. I mean, it's going to be phase able to control it. They should be able to control the spawns, which they do. And we're really going to need to keep an eye on Formal and Clayster coming up here because they're usually, you know, you've, we've seen two, even three weapons on this particular map. With the band, it's going to limit it to one weapon apiece. You're going to have a scythe for Clayster and Formal. So as we get closer to Bunker here, Honestly, whoever gets a big edge with that and can really lock down a lane, it may be a really, really crucial part of who's picking up time there at Bunker. Well, you might not even need to use it on Bunker, right? A site is nutty. I mean, we've seen Well, if you it get do... the hold, you can look out towards back lot. Right, I mean, we, we've really seen it up. do some nice things on Bunker. I think you could even save it, though, for later. I mean, you get control of that mid again. I think mid is a, a very good hard point to control in the second rotation of hills. It looks like Optic's going to give up already on this so hard this point. So this is going to be so a full hold for phase. It, it, it is, rocks. it is. And you look at... Some of the things that uh, FaZe has coming up, uh, Naval not going to have camo in time. It's really just going to be Clay with the Scythe. And I don't think you want to use the Scythe to break into the no, hardpoint. No, you no, want to no. use it once you get set up. And Clay doing a nice job waiting for teammates. And it looks like, judging by the mini-map, that you're going to see a pinch try and come in here from FaZe. It was Clay trying to put pressure over by Bunker, but the assault's really going to come from Mansion. That's where the guys on phase can really make an impact here. Well, let's see if Scump can hold off the initial onslaught. They're holding down the back. Well, Krim ended up dropping, so now the pressure's going to probably fly in from both sides. They're starting to trade him out. They think the heat wave going off. That's from Karma. He's able to pick up two. Can he deal with the backside as well? Karma having to do everything now. He has Formal coming up through Fire Pit, pinching around the back, so Formal's actually able to find three. Yeah, can he find the fourth? Not able to do it, but Karma on the backside will clean it up. That duo of Karma and Formal completely just obliterated phase. Yeah, they went huge. Uh, Karma played that perfectly very passive just waited for his teammates to make that flank specifically formal and once formal was there he was able to pick up the kills and then karma came and completed the pinch and 
Casey. Well, Karma held off Karma. What, three inside, yeah. and then Formal held off three on the back during their Karma's still working on streaks. Optic takes a very nice hard point here. So it looks like he's going to actually earn himself the dart in the Lightning Strike. And he's going to have one player crossing. Going to be able to complete that. So Karma's going to get the Hellstorm missile as well. That'll be huge for Optic Gaming if they can make the comeback in this one. And you can see he was struggling a bit before this. He was 8-16. and 16. This 6 streak has really brought him back into this. Probably trying to build a little bit of confidence as well. But he will end up dropping. I want to stick with him because he's got these streaks. Is he able to connect on multiple players? It looks like he's just going to go for one there near half wall. Now he's starting to slide on in. He's got Formal to his left. He's going to need Formal's help. As there was one in half hole that you can see Formal has been tagged up to. Where do you think the Scythe comes into play? Placer's already used his. Formal is still holding on. Clay used his to get some control here in the middle, which I think is a good play. It's something I brought up when you, you asked me about the Scythe use. I think if you're Formal at this point, there's no point to use it. Here, yeah. obviously, Mansion, not a good spot either. I think you use it potentially on the rotation. Yeah, but are you getting to the point where you're only going to get one use now? Probably. You're probably only going to get one use of the scythe on the side of Optic Gaming. Uh, Clay, obviously, you'd have to have a pretty good second half to earn his, but there's still an outside chance with the way the score is. It's pretty close. It's going to be an extended game. There's a chance Clay gets it again. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if this makes it a bunker. He should be having it up again, but let's see uh, if he's able to pull it off. He's able to find a kill there. Attach picking up one as well. It'll be enabled, though, and attach inside around the hard point. Enable trying to... Check outside. Salt one by Fire Pit playing behind couches. Now as the pressure comes in, the shot's shaky, but enough to connect and pick one up. Him and Zuma doing a good job holding on. He's going to check back by Lambo as the pressure comes in, and Abel finds that as well. FaZe holding on, and this is a hard point where they dominated Optic on previously. They're getting it done here as well. And something that's uh, very interesting is we talked about, like, FaZe, how do they have these close games? Because they just start slaying so much. Like, everybody's so individually talented that, like, nobody's in the hard point. I feel like uh, one thing they've done a great adjustment here in stage two is enable. He's been a, a mainstay inside of the hill, and then usually it's kind of like advanced warfare where it's either one of the two. Like attach is having a big game, big game, and Zuma's in the hard point, or Zuma's having a big game and attach is in the hard point. Well, let's see if Zuma's lightning connects on anything in rocks. It looks like it picks up one. His kinetic armor goes up. He finds two. The heat wave comes in. If he had stayed looking, focusing on that area, he might have been able to pick up karma as well. But you do have attach in for the trade before finally falling. Let's focus on now the optic gaming hold for a bit. Crim, Scump, Karma all on the kill feed. Is there able to clear it out? Look how far they spawn out. Uh, the side of phase. I mean, I know they have one close at satellite, but everyone else having to rotate all the way over from back lot, man. So this is where teams usually get blown out against Optic Gaming. You see they start to go on a little bit of a tear, and they're not able to complete the kills to bring it back. And you see three kills in the feed there for phase. And now they need to figure out a way to get control of the hard point. You see Enable's trying to push up. He's going to get one. Scum here in a perfect position to lock this down. If you're phase, you've got to be contemplating. Do we just rotate, play for the spawns, try and make this back at snow, and go with a little bit of a closer game, or do we keep challenging this? And I, I, I would actually opt to play for those spawns for the next hard point, because it doesn't look like they're going to get control of half wall, and now it's going to be a pretty close game going into this you know, large snow area, and Karma has these streaks to work and with. And you, that was a really good hold for Optic. You end up getting nearly a full 60. I think phase had it right off the rip, and then you get the break in, and now everyone getting nothing. shut down. You get nothing, nothing with the lightning. Nothing whatsoever with the lightning and three players drop for optic so everyone inside the hard point going to be phased at least for the time being but Krim able to find one Krim able to find two now finding time inside of the hard point he just needs teammates to pick that up as now it's currently being contested there is a dart out is that coming in from karma it looks like karma had the dart out he was able to at least pick up one on attach and now Krim has played very well with the submachine gun in his hands as a play that we've seen some big hills karma grabs to their inside of the hard point but Back on with Grim. He's going to be working with Scum, trying to get control of this hill. He's able to pick up one, and they're able to get control. Nice plays there from Optic Gaming. 17 seconds left on this hard point. Yep. It's going to be phase setting up for Bunker. I like this decision a lot. And this is back-to-back -back hard points where Optic is going to get the edge, but you know how important this hold, if Bunker could be. It, I mean, it doesn't matter. I mean, they're going to go up by a handful of seconds, Optic, and phase as long as they pick up these kills on rotation. They'll be able to make it right back. Well, let's see if they can hold on. So far, the back's been cleaned out. They're all pressing in from one side. They've got to go and try to get the break before the two other phase members are able to rotate over. That's exactly what they do. Both might end up dropping. The heat wave comes in. They're able to respond, but they cannot win the gunfights. It's still enable holding on inside, and now Optic has to deal with the full side of phase. Well, now they get Clay in there as well, and that's what's important. You get the AR player set up inside a bunker, and you're able to just put down some shots, pepper some players as they come in, and let the SMGs finish them off. And Tatch actually finishes off Zuma there as the team kill, and Tatch able to get one. Ducks down, trying to just hide, just bait his life out there. There's the break. He There's drops, the break. but the break comes in for Optic Gaming. 20 seconds left on it. 
They'll be able to take the lead here. FaZe coming in on a nice pinch. Still a ton of time left. And I think FaZe only earned, what, 10 or so points because it was so hotly contested by the set of optics. So when you take a look at this, it's probably going to end up being a 15 to 20 point advantage. You actually get off a bunker there for Optic Gaming. And this is going to push them out to what? We're looking at 212. So they're going to have an 18, 20 point advantage right now for Optic. This one definitely coming down to the wire. And it looks like the scythe of Feister definitely going to come into play. So he's going to get one additional use out of this compared to Formal. So, well, I mean, Formal still has the opportunity to earn his as well. He's got a ways to go. He might, though, yeah. Ways to go. just pops. Clay is going to be able to get one. He's just going to turn, watch his back, and he's going to just entry his SMGs into the hard point. So Zuma, you see in the kill feed, picks up two. Clay opens that up, forces players to just dive out at Zuma as soon as he picks up those kills with a scythe. And Clay, being very passive, turns on Skump there with the scythe. Nice shots there from Clayster. Knows one more player is challenging, not able to pick it up. It's going to be... Optic Gaming, though, still in charge of this hardpoint phase. Finally takes it back. 20 seconds left on it. If you're Optic, you got to think about you know, locking down this mansion. Well, what's scary is because FaZe has dominated them twice, right? On mansion, I believe yeah. both times it's been pretty strong holes by FaZe. You just can't keep pushing to get control. It's going to be FaZe taking the last few seconds here on that first hard point, but this is where I think the game is going to be won or lost for either side. Who controls Mansion this time around? Well, here we go, baby. It's coming down to the stretch. Game all but tied. Your place are dropping, but 41 and a four streak for Zuma. Can he answer? Pushing out, should have one kill, not able to win that. That's Formal and crew coming in. Formal wins one. He's throwing nades at Karma, not able to pick it up, but Karma is maintaining the pressure, 230. 20 more points needed for Optic. He's got Heatwave to go with, pops it off, but he doesn't end up getting the kill. Scup may be there to finish it up, but he's actually watching the backside, not able to get both. Phase breaking in for the time being, no one able to maintain and, and, and the And can win it off here, and that's a huge play there. I mean, Karma uses his heat wave, and they're able to take him out, and that player stays alive, pushes into the hard point, and you should see Phase here. As long as they pick up this one player directly to the right, yep, should be able to take the lead. And I think it's important. Ooh, if you're, if you're a phase, one. I push zoom, I push attach out towards snow. Yep. Push him out. You can get exactly. I think you went perfectly. I think you get exactly yeah. 250 as long as they can prevent Optic from getting in. Can they shut down the contest? It's been contested for a second, so you're not going to be able to win it here. Picks up one. Picks up two. Enable going big and going out to find the third. There it is. Enable going huge, but it's going to be Optic inside the hard point. Formal did get that scythe. We weren't sure if he get the second. He did, but he's going to end up falling. They need two points. One point. There it is. Oh. Optic Gaming wins. 250, 247. And, and it was because space just a not push out of mansion. They get that great hold, Woo. but at the end there, they just stay, take the time, and they're, they're actually playing for the win there. They well, were not planning they, on Optic Gaming. If there was no contest, they exactly what uh, I think. Optic, exactly Optic contest for like two seconds, and that's what kind of throws that plan astray, because at that point, Optic, they're spawning out by satellite. They're in a perfect position to take half wall. So they just spawn up, get inside oh. the hard point. They pop that second sight. Fort Bull finally gets it picks up one kill, they're able to hold on and win. That was one hell of a game one. My God, that came down to the wire. You had so many lead changes, and Optic just narrowly able to take the edge there. Uh, once, If you didn't watch the show yesterday, we got a little bit different of a flow here since Courage has traveled for the Gfinity event. So once we get to the scoreboard, we're going to be introducing Revan, who has been doing an excellent job breaking it down, doing some telestration, looking at key events throughout the course of the game via replay. But, uh, man, that was fun. Yeah, that was a great game. And it's only going to be FaZe's third hardpoint loss in Stage 2. Optic Gaming remains undefeated on the map. I said right before this, I feel like all of FaZe's games have struggled. I've seen like 250 to 240 they're something. Close, man. They're that close. one, uh, they're a little bit on the uh, losing end there, unfortunately. But now we've got the scoreboard up. Let's toss it over to Revan to break it down. Wow, what a game one for both these teams. Very contested and very competitive, as we thought, going into this just based off of the map stats. As you can see by the scoreboard behind me, Positive four was Optic Gaming throughout the entirety of the game. And, well, they only wind up winning by a total of three points. See how it all breaks down behind me. But there was a, a moment in that game that I clipped out for you guys that I just wanted to highlight for everybody out there. We always talk about the bunker hard point, and at times, well, it, it is the money hard point for this game. So you get your ideal setup going. You're able to lock it down for the majority of the time. This is the first one throughout the game, and I thought both teams just did a, a fantastic job of setting up to break into the hard point. So let's roll the clip and see how FaZe approach it. And then later in clip, we'll see how Optic Gaming do the exact same thing. So right away, it is Clacer. He's just trying to stay alive because you see on the minimap how the play is developing for FaZe. They're sending three players through Mansion to attack Formal on the anchor. Crimsex is also there to kind of support him. But because those players die, look how far away Optic Gaming are spawning. This gives FaZe an opportunity to break into the hardpoint 
and solidify their control. But Karma makes a very smart play here. He commits to one side of Bunker, wins his initial two engagements, and then he just stays alive. He doesn't try to do too much, opens up room for Formal to do work on the flank. Everybody moving in to reinforce Karma. So, once again, this is how it all breaks down. The green X's are going to be optic gaming. The red X's will be phased. This is where Formal is set up initially. This is where Clayster is set up initially. You see phase how they were trying to set up everything. They sent three players towards the Manchester side of the map. And this is a very good spread by FaZe. Because once they take out Formal, they also have Crimsic supporting him here. Karma's inside the hard point. They got another player there supporting him. But these players push on through, right? Three on two, you're expected to overwhelm these players in the back. Formal dies. Crimsic dies after. They start spawning out over near rocks. So as you can see, things are developing. Clayster's going to try to push on through while these members try to continue the flank and attack through the bunker doorway while maintaining the spawns over near the backside of the map here near the cube. Yes, four on two here, you're expected to overwhelm. Initially, they break in, but as I clear the screen, what winds up happening, Karma wins his initial engagements. He stays alive. His two teammates who spawn out rocks now push over to help him out so that they could overwhelm the phase players inside the hard point. But what winds up happening is that because phase are spawning out over near cube, they're so focused on flooding in and helping try to try to contest the hard point, they forget to, to pick up formal on the flank. He picks up, I believe it was two crucial kills. A smart play by Karma initially opens up room for his teammates to push him and help him out. Overall, it was just great, well set up breaks from either team. And I mean, well, you can't really get a much closer hard point game than that, but it's only game one of this series. We're moving over to Search and Destroy next. I'm going to send it back over to Maven and Mr. X to bring you the action. Great.